Hello and welcome to this West London Sport QPR podcast. I'm Dan Bennett. I'm joined by former QPR striker Kevin Gallen and Ben Kosky, lifelong QPR fan, journalist, current QPR program editor. And uh, we finally have a win to talk about after six games without one. Um, QPR beating Derby 1-0 thanks to Luke Amos's late winner. Um, but I want to start by talking about something Mark Wolverson actually said in his press conference after the game is that, you know, the win basically keeps QPR in the mix for the playoffs. I mean, Kev, last time we spoke, we kind of started by talking about whether the playoff dream is dead and you sort of kind of thought it was after the de- defeat at Preston. You know, it looked really difficult from that point on. But, you know, you look at the league table, there's QPR are still only three points off sixth place Sheffield United and they've still got to play Sheffield United as well. Um, but then, you know, you look on the other hand, there's a lot of teams between QPR and those playoff spots and they're going to have to rely on a lot of those teams dropping points between now and the end of the season. So, I mean, my question to you is a similar to one to the way we kicked off last time is, are QPR really still in the mix for playoffs, well, do you think? My head's down. I'm just looking at the table right now. <laughs> so just, uh, do you know what? It, it, it is a possibility. It's a really outside outside chance. But, I mean, we've got three real, real tough games to coming up as well. So, um, I would say very unlikely. Uh, I think that just that drop in form in the last two months is has killed sort of any realistic chance of being in the playoffs. And we had it in our hands, I think. And and it's just, you know, I know it was lovely and it was a good three points yesterday just to keep us in the hunt, keep us um, dreaming, keep us, uh, you know, something for the next match where if we'd uh, not lot, uh, if it was going to be a draw, then it would have been, you know, you're not looking for this. It's Stoke next on Saturday. So, it really is it's be tough, but you never know. You never know. Um, but you got you're relying on other clubs as well, so and other teams to drop points, and it's a, it's a difficult task. What QPR have to do is go to uh, Stoke on Saturday and win the match, and hopefully, and hope that uh, the teams above us have dropped some points, and then that keeps us in the hunt for the Sheffield United game. Which you know, if we're still in the hunt, and uh, that's a massive game, then but. Massive game on Saturday. Got to get, got to get the three points and um, and hope like you Millwall and Sheffield United and I'm looking at Blackburn, Middlesbrough. It's going to be tough, very tough to get in the playoffs. No, it should be an but, exciting end to the season. That's for sure in the championship with so many teams going for it. But like you say, it's just the fact there's so few games left now, um, and there's so many teams between QPR and the playoffs. And it, you know, if you lose five in a row right near the end of the season, it's like it's really difficult to see a team that does that getting in the playoffs. But the basic fact is, you know, three points off the playoffs with three games left. And you, you say that and you think there is still a chance. But I mean, just on the game itself, then, um, Kev, I mean, it wasn't exactly a great performance, was it? I mean, Mark Warburton said after in his press conference that his team was second best um, in the second half, um, that they won ugly. Um is that kind of just what you need though in a situation like this? I'm sure you'd, be, you'd have been in teams where you're on a losing run and you're not playing well, but you just have to kind of grind out and win. And like, how big is a win like that finally when it just ends the losing run? Like, how much is it of a lift can it provide? Well, it's, it's a lift, but it's a relief as well. Relief yeah. to end that non winning run. Uh, you know, it don't get better than sort of last minute and you win. It's a massive relief at home. Um, Really good crowd, so it just gives you that you know feel good factor. Um, yeah, it was just great. To, I mean, QPR, I didn't think, especially second half, didn't really play well, and you know, Derby will be coming out of that thinking, you know, how did we not get at least a draw and keep their sort of season alive? But this happens in football. What happens is, and I've been in a similar situation. I was playing for Luton when we had a thirty point deduction, yeah. and Derby had a twenty one. You have to go and win every match. So what happens then is you leave gaps at the back because a point for Derby really ain't, it's, it's all right, keeps them going for the next, but you need the three points and that's what happens. And then the goal that Amos has scored, and if you look back on it, as a Derby point of view, where's their left back? The left back's just gone the AWOL <laughs> because mm. they're all going forward to get to win the match, to get the three points. So, you know, um, Fair play, uh, Linda Dyke's great ball and exploited that, you know, lack of concentration from Derby and Amos in the last few minutes, you know, 1v1 and he's he's put it away. I mean, he's obviously he's confident he scored on um, Friday against Huddersfield and 
you know, he took that like a centre forward. It was a great finish. Just rolled it into the net. It was, it was a very good finish and well done. Would you have scored that? Um, yeah, probably. One on one. A lot of pressure, Not I don't, <laughs> I don't I think mean, really it was a bit too far out <laughs> now, wasn't it? <laughs> well, it's not tapping, Ben. <laughs> I mean, me and Ben were talking just before we came on about uh, Derby and perhaps surprised that they didn't go for it a bit more earlier on. But I suppose it's difficult for Wayne Rooney because they're playing a lot of young lads and maybe they don't have the quality to go gung-ho and try and chase a victory because that would just, you know, be self-defeating and result in a defeat. But, um, I mean, Ben, you're at the game and you, you weren't feeling too confident before and when we spoke of, um, of QPR getting a result. But, I mean, does, what do you think? Does this win still make playoffs a sort of outside possibility or was it already done before that win do you think well I think as, uh, as Kev said it, it's it's a long shot um, it's not impossible um, I mean when you look at as, as you said Dan that the basic fact of three points off sixth place you know it's it's still within touching distance but there's another statistic there which which, which you've also got to factor in which is it's not just three points off the top six it's a, a goal difference uh, I think of eight mm. difference to Sheffield United so that means in effect you know it's not enough just to beat Sheffield United you need to beat them convincingly to, to get close to them um, in, in terms of goal difference and I think that that for me is the key is that if at this stage you, you're literally one res, within one result of getting into the place you need to be that's one thing but essentially Rangers are not in that position. They they are not one result away. They're more than one result away. And with three games to go, you know, that's that's a lot of ground to make up. So I think there's still the possibility, which is important because, you know, there was there was a real danger the season was just going to drift completely. Um, and, and you can end up then just falling down the table, finishing about 15th or something, um, which would not be a fair reflection of the kind of season it's been. So it is still, it is, it is a long shot, as, as I said. I, I think I think everyone's got to look at it in, in those terms. If they can go to Stoke and win on Saturday, and if some of the teams above are still slipping up, then you, you look at that possibility more strongly. And that's another thing. I mean, I don't want to sound too sort of negative about it. That is one thing that can give um, cause for optimism, is if you look at the teams between QPR and Sheffield United, Possibly Millwall, you'd say, are, are in a bit of form, but Middlesbrough are not in form. Blackburn are not in form. Sheffield United themselves are not in great form. So in that yeah. sense, you, you know, you, you can look at that and say, well, who's got the momentum? And, and possibly only Millwall of those sides has got momentum at the moment. And yeah, if, if, if Rangers could, in theory, end the season with four straight wins, then they've still got a chance, yeah. I suppose the thing is, though, Ben, as well, is they're not just in, you know, battling poor form. The, the thing they're battling, again, as they have been all season, is injuries. You know, we saw Mojas are the bad they're obviously limp off with a calf problem against Derby. Um, you know, Rob Dickey out for the season. You know, the goalkeeper issues we've talked about a lot in here. Most of those guys are still out. You know, Kieran Westwood's obviously come in and looks quite convincing, so that that problem's kind of fixed. You know, Barbe's got a knee issue that he's battling with. I think he probably will come back for Stoke, but He's not 100%, you know, he missed the game because of inflammation in the knee and it came too quickly after the last game. But it's going to be really difficult, isn't it, without those key players as well. That's a, a, going to be a massive factor, I think, going into the, the end of the season without those key guys um, involved. Yeah, you, you've got to factor that in, of course. I mean, as you say, defensively, we're pretty short on options at the moment. I mean, there wasn't really any possibility of playing a back three uh, against Derby because you haven't got three all right, you could maybe said after draft well, someone um, in. Yeah, but, but basically yeah. you're down to your last two recognised central defenders. I think the other area of the team, for me, where, where it's, it's starting to look a problem is, is just the because of the change of system, that there's a lack of width there. Um, I mean, certainly you, you feel once you've got, uh, you know, full-backs instead of wing-backs, I, I suppose, to me anyway, the... the um, that, that outlet has sort of been reduced. And, and I just looking at that, I felt they're not really, they, they were getting balls into the box, but not, not particularly good balls. And, uh, you know, I mean, 
be interested in, in Kev's perspective on this because Lyndon Dykes, I think, often gets a fair bit of criticism, but uh, perhaps sometimes you're only as good as the service you're getting. And, um, you know, for, for me, I don't feel he's getting enough uh, good quality balls uh, come into him at the moment. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I, I, I thought, I thought first half, I thought he didn't put himself out about a bit. I didn't think he won headers and hold it up. And and the other flip side is what you said: the service ain't great. And I've been a centre forward, and you can always it's a bit of both, isn't it? It's just like you're not doing centre forward is not doing enough, and then he'll turn around and say, "Well, your service into me is rubbish. I can't do anything with it." I've been there loads of times. <laughs> It's a bit of the blame footballers, and I was part of it, and I'm, I was one of them, always put the blame on someone else. They never <laughs> really, rarely take responsibility. So it's all a bit about that. He'll be saying, well, I ain't getting the service. And they'll say, well, you're not making the runs. And it's like up and down. So they always like meet in the middle a little bit. You can do more. And yeah, right, the service ain't great into me as well. So we'll have to work on both. Um, Width-wise, I mean, was Al where's Albert? I mean... You play, I quite. I was. I thought we've done well at the back. Four at the back. Um, I thought it was. You know, we talk about no plan B, but he's gone from always playing three at the back or five to a four, and they look. You know, up until sort of I think McCallum had a bit of a struggle against the right winger in the second half, but um, who was a good player. Um, yeah, I thought they had done quite well. It was. It, it was one of those games where. You know, whoever makes a real bad mistake and the other team capitalises it on it, wins the game and QPR, you know, they made a mistake where the left back bombed right forward and didn't get back and got caught out. And as I said, Amos capitalising it with a fine finish. Yeah, It'll be I mean, interesting to see what happens on Stoke, players available. Do you go two up front? I mean, George Thomas sort of played up front and buzzed around and made some good runs and you know, hassled and harried the the, the Derby defence. Uh, be interesting to see what he does, but, you know, it's, it's a must-win game. QPR now at this stage of the season, it don't matter how, how we do it, but Saturday is a must-win game. And like, keep and just to keep the season going. And for us supporters, keep, keep the excitement going. Do you know what I mean? For the now, and then you move on to the Sheffield United game. And if you're in... For, Within three points on Saturday night, and you're heading into the Friday game against Sheffield United with three points, you're thinking, hold on a minute, win this game, and you're like, come on. Yeah, so I asked um, Mark Wolverton about the change of system after the game, actually, uh, obviously moving from a three at the back to a four at the back, and whether it was kind of out of his own choice or whether it was out of necessity. And he basically said that it was out of more out of necessity because of the injuries that QPR have got at the moment. I suppose. Like Kev, you mentioned a doma there. It's like the problem we, we spoke about is a long time ago. We spoke about it, but it was like, I think Ben actually raised it quite a lot. It's like the issue of where he was going to fit in the team because they weren't playing wide players. And uh, you can't really play him as a flat fullback. You have to play him as a wing back. So without that system, I think it's very hard for him to fit in. But I mean, if I could just provide my take on the uh, on the playoff um, situation. I mean, to be honest, I can't, I, I can't really see it happening. I think with the injuries QPR I've got at the moment um, and so few games left, I can't see it happening. I think they have to win all three. And I think if they drop points in any of them, if, you know, if they draw one, as soon as they do that, I think it's over. Um, and even if they win all three, I'm sceptical whether that will be enough anyway. I think the lowest anyone's ever got into the playoffs in that sixth spot was like 68 points. I think I was Leicester uh, back in 2012, maybe. Um, and I think, yeah, three wins would take QPR to 72, I believe, which... In previous seasons, that's not always been enough. But at the same time, I'm not willing to write them off completely because, you know, like Ben said, there's a lot of teams outside those playoff spots that aren't in great form at the moment um, that QBR could potentially capitalise on. But yeah, I'm, I'm sceptical, but I'm not willing to uh, to write them off completely. But I suppose, Kev, one thing a very strong end to the season might do is keep Mark Warburton in the job. You know, if you haven't watched our podcast last week, last week we went, in depth on the um, the current manager situation and uh, what the latest is on that. And it's our kind of expectation at West London Sport that Mark Warburton won't be in the job um, come next season, barring a really strong end to the year. Um, so I, I suppose, you know, a really strong end to the year might, might keep him in that job. But 
uh, of these games kind of showing at least that there's still that fight there from the players for this manager and that there is still kind of like a future there if QPR wants it, something to build on going into next season? Yeah, well, we sort of talked, like we said, we talked about it last week and Ian was very um, positive that for um, Mark Warburton to stay. I was sort of sitting on the fence a little bit um, because you have a strong end to the season, which is capable, QPR are now capable of doing. I know there's injuries, but... Uh, I think he. I think he deserves really. If I look, if I look at the big, the bigger picture, the whole, the whole thing, you know, real good season. We're only like, we're three points off playoffs. I mean, if in August we would have said we have three games to go, we're going to be three points off the playoffs. I think everyone would have maybe. Do you know what I mean? Do you yeah. think people would have taken that? Yeah, right they kind of. Yeah, the expectation was like playoffs when it coming into the year. But do you reckon yeah, but, people I mean, would have been happy with that? That was because we had such. A strong end to last season, and then yeah. we added some uh, decent players, and we added Johansson and Austin, which you know the fans were big clamour for, and um, so everything was like it was a feel good factor. Played Man United in pre season, looked really good against them. I know it wasn't their first team, but you know it just the expectation builds, and you're thinking, well, this is a chance for the playoffs. It's a disappointment that I, I really do think we should be in the playoffs. But if you look at the bigger picture, you know, players have progressed like Dickey under um, the manager, Willock. I mean, they're sellable assets now. And, you know, he has a lot to do with it because he's put them in the team and, uh, and, and, and done well and developed them. And the, and the best way to develop any football player, we can talk about our oh, coaching on the pitch, play every week, give them the opportunity to play every, every Saturday at three o'clock in front of thousands of people. That's the best development of any football player, is play. And you learn as you go along and gain experience. That is the best way of developing. And he's given those um, lads a, a chance. I think I think he deserves to have another crack at it. Yeah. I'm keen to get your take on this, Ben. Obviously, the last time we spoke about it, you weren't on. I mean, what is your kind of view on the manager situation now going into the next season? My personal view is I would like Mark Warburton to continue. Um, I think, uh, as, as Kev has outlined, uh, the influence he's had on development of, of, of the team and certain players is, is there for all to see. Um, I, I honestly feel that this end to the season is, is potentially crucial um, because, as I said, if you had a situation where the team just falls away completely, ends up about 15th, then you look at it and you say, well, we've gone backwards this year. Um, if they finish the season strongly, and that doesn't necessarily mean getting into the top six. It means maybe getting close, maybe getting to eighth, ninth place, similar to last year. Then I think you'd look at that and you can say, well, there's an element of consistency because, you know, last year we, we've shown the end to last season wasn't the fluke. We kind of matched that near enough. So, there, there's enough evidence there to suggest that, that there's more to come. Um, and, and, and that's how I would, you know, that, that, that's how I would look at it. I think overall, if you look at it, the, the, the good certainly outweighs the bad. And yeah, for me, ideally, um, the manager carries on next season. Um, if I'm entirely honest, my, my feeling is that decision has probably already been taken behind the scenes. Um, I, I suspect it's not something that will be kind of hanging in the balance about uh, as to what are the results of the last three games. But yeah, my, my personal preference is I think when you look at where the club was three years ago when Mark Warburton came in, you look at where they are now, um, it's been big strides forward and not just on the pitch, but off the pitch as well. Um, you look at the kind of atmosphere around the stadium, um, the, the feeling of if you want to call it togetherness, I suppose, I, I feel that has been coming back um, in the last few years. And um, so for me, I, I would I would hope he'll be carrying on. But I, I suspect it's something that's probably already been decided one way or the other. I yeah, I don't think they that I can't see the people who, who make these decisions are deciding Mark Warburton's future on the last three games of the season. Yes. That would be nonsense, really. I mean, you, you do it over the whole season. 
You would, and, isn't it? Like you said, and like players, few sellable assets now, where three years ago, we, we didn't really. I mean, we had Eze, which we did sell, but I'm talking like Rob Dickey, Chris Willock. Senny D.A. Yeah. probably. Mm. So, be interesting. And who, who says that he might, he might want to not stay anyway? I don't know. We don't, we don't know. He might be thinking, well, I've, I've taken this team as far as I can and I'll go for I might. He might want to change himself. We don't know. Ask him, Dan, next time you see him. I'll do that, mate. So, yeah. Mark, are you staying or are you, are you going? Yeah, to, ask from <laughs> West London. Kevin Gallen says, are you staying or are you going? Yeah. I, think, I think one other thing yeah, to, to add into that as well is that um, you just look at the time scale of the summer and, and because of the World Cup, next season starts ridiculously early, you know, starting the end of July. So that means pre-season is what? End of June, probably. Um, so if there is going to be a change, then it's something that does have to be decided fairly quickly because there's very limited time, you know, and, and that's even if, I mean, let's say some, something spectacular happens, QPR do get involved in the playoffs, you know, then you've got even less time if, if there's going to be a change. So it is something that will have to be, I think, made clear fairly soon after the end of the season, one way or the other. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let us know uh, your thoughts in the comments below on, on the manager situation and whether you think QPR can, uh, can still make the playoffs. And uh, yeah, leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, please, because that helps us out a lot. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. We'll be back with another video very soon.